Hey everybody, this is Kasu. Welcome back to more Kaiju. You guys know the drill by now. I'll be going through five more creatures. This will be the second last video I'll be making for more Kaiju since we're running to the end. And again, today we'll be going through five creatures. And yep, you know the drill. I'll be going straight into it immediately. Now, first up is not really a creature that you can tame, but more of a boss mob, which I'll summon far away. Uh, this creature is in the ocean so i will spawn it here now before i spawn this creature i'm gonna read off to you um what or rather who he is or who she is and what basically is her name so basically i'm going to be summoning a okeanos the embodiment of the ocean this is her bio the younger sister of the ancient gods okeanos can use psychic powers to control water and bend it to her will the entire oceans would rise at her command, crushing, tossing, and slicing her opponents to bits. The rival to the bloodlust titan, Behemoth, Okeanos and Behemoth possess a telepathic link that would drive them into an uncontrollable rage when near each other, in addition to subconsciously drawing them towards each other no matter where they were on the planet. Okeanos dealt the finishing blow to the god serpent when she crushed the continent-sized world serpent up with the force of the entire ocean. Soon after the Titan War, he successfully defeated her rival and younger brother, Behemoth, leaving him under the Earth's crust. However, Okeanos knew, uh, would eventually fall into madness from the plague, an infection that, would, that she was not immune to, resulting in the old, other Titan rallying together to defeat her. She was eventually slain by her, by her older brother, Kaitan, and until her death, only a handful of Titans could hope to survive the ocean's wrath. Old stories passed down amongst the kaiju speak of clashes between Okeanos and Bohemia being so fierce that, that the planet would be terraformed by their frequent blows. Sounds like Groudon and Kyogre, but let's summon her and see what, what she has. So yeah, she spawns a bunch of a, uh, loyal eel servants and she starts you know, cont continually spitting stuff at you. And not very, again, I can't really tame her, but her minions are tameable. And let's, okay, just, you know, before I sh got there, you are ugly. Oh my god, you are very, very ugly. Oh, that's cool though. Yeah, that's pretty cool. But uh, before I go on to the minion, let me read off to you while this is happening in the background. Let me read off to you what uh, he, her boss notes are. It's non timable but its minions are. When its minions are active, it won't take damage. Its health also will heal rapidly and it will do heavily increased damage. Immune to poison. Minions have a left click and right click as well as a C. So I'm going to show you the minions. What the hell happened? I'm going to show you the minions now after I kill her. So once you kill her, you gain a bunch of blueprints. Like the stone shell armor, the blueprint for the arachne armor, the blueprint for behemoth armor, the blueprint for drac uh, primitive draconic battle armor, I don't know for who. Uh, elder monster costume, you just get a bunch of stuff. Uh, you gain her lore, which is a kaiju that fell into madness. Probably the first to do as well. Okeanos Rampage started the ancient Kaiju War. Despite the world back then almost entirely consisting of ocean and Okeanos loyal use and her control over the sea. Together, for the first and probably last time, Kaiju of all kinds united against the Mad Sea God. And after a mighty struggle, the embodiment of the ocean was defeated. And you also get <coughs> this Spawn Tameable Jaeger, which uh, I will show you in the next video because uh, this video we already have a bunch of things to show and I'll show you the minions now so this is Okeanos a loyal eel server not really loyal since you can tame it uh, okay, as you can see it's able to be on land however it's super slow on land but once it goes inside the water it'll be well it's a eel so it'll be faster for, oh, for its left click seems like it's just a bite attack however let's spawn something to bite at there you go a sauropod so left click is a bite attack that deals quite a heavy amount of damage right click is a tail swipe swipe that deals electrocute uh the wrist is a bit short though 
C key is oh an acid speed. But this acid speed doesn't really you know deal any lingering effect. But it does deal electrocute. Funny enough. So yeah, that is uh Okeanos' loyal you and Okeanos herself. Next up is this guy. God damn you look terrifying. This guy is Goliath. He has a bio which I'm gonna read now. A normally peaceful titan. Goliath is a foodie who enjoys eating. His stomach is capable of digesting almost anything from plants, meats, even rocks. The rocks he digests can then later be used as lava he can pour from holes in his stomach. Despite his slow and gentle nature, Goliath is a powerful fighter when time calls. One of the five titan band alongside Kaitan, Iroh, Vaust, and Horus. Goliath was the most mysterious of to Kaitan, despite the amount of time the five spent together. It is unknown how or why Goliath became part of the group, since none of the others had been close friends with the sloth-like titan before. But it seemed everyone was pretty happy to have this titan around. Goliath survived the second and plague titan wars, though he sadly met his end against Utolong after awakening in a weakened state and being attacked by Sasorasu. This species of titan is extremely gluttonous and is capable of digesting meat, plants, stone, earth, and even molten magma. It is believed other members of Goliath's species exist in the molten layer of the earth, having been eating away at its magma for millions of years. So yeah, let's, I mean like, it's quite, you know, mag magma-like, but let's take a look at its abilities. Well, uh, it's really slow compared to the rest of the Aims and magma be damned, you get to touch water. And apparently, has a powered down state. Not sure what that does, but let's take a look at his uh, abilities with a Sauropod to handle the brunt of the damage. So, left click is a bite attack, and this basically harvests most resources. And as you can tell, the bite doesn't do as much damage, but it's covers rocks and it start making this molten ore which is basically ammo for him. Right click is a claw smash attack that sets creatures on fire. There you go. X key is fire brew. Never mind let me just summon another guy before I do that. X key is fire breath which um, needs shows like this. Got them. Alright. As you can tell, that deals quite a bit of damage. Left control is belly fire. A raw, it roars and shoots fire from holes in the stomach. Sets the ground. Oh, it's dead. Never mind. Summon something else. Sets the ground on fire similar to a behemoth. Inflicts explosive fire damage on direct contact and burn with the AoE. Has long cooldown and cannot be used with uh, insufficient stamina. So yeah, let's try that out. But let's get a clearer view first. And yeah, that's it. You just you know ignite the floor on fire, like so. It's pretty devastating to be honest. Alternate R is a raw, which. Sounds like this. Never mind, alternate R is my some hotkey again that I cannot really use. So yeah, apologies about that. Now last one is Z, which is power up. Never mind, this guy's gonna die. So apparently pressing Z gives like changes your state from power down to power up. And from the looks of it, let's see what Okay, let's see his attacks. Okay, his attacks deal more damage. Yeah, even his bite attack dealt more damage. And for, see, and for looks of it, everything will just do burnt now. In fact, I think the flip the area around him seems like it's like melting into lava. Interesting, interesting. So yeah, this guy is just fire incarnate, I guess. Now, let's take a look at his uh, 
side notes. He's immune to fire debuffs as well as fire based damage attacks. Immune to being frozen, exceptions would be other mods, fire debuffs, etc. Classified as a boss, immune to most status effects anyway. Insulates uh, nearby allies, though causing causes overheat when in warmer temperature. Takes 2 to 3 times the damage from direct hits from ice based or water based attack. But the status won't do anything. So you receive extra damage from ice and water breaths, however, the freezing won't occur. Can be told to sit. Now this is this sit is unique. When sitting, you'll gain a guardian buff, giving a buff to all nearby creatures regardless of alliance, making them immune to freezing. However, it will also set non-allied creatures on fire. And will cook meat in its inventory passively and is omnivorous. Let's let, let's try to sit. Let's try to sit, because why the fuck not, right? Now sit down. Yep, as you can tell, um, it's setting things on fire, however, it's, it's preventing freezing. Yeah, this guy is just gonna die now. So yeah, if you guys are you know, annoyed by a lot of random shit around the, your base, you just plop one guy down. Alright, and that was the Goliath. Up next is this guy. It's called Fela, however, it's real name is actually Titania, the Monarch Dragon King. Should be Queen, but never mind. So this is her bio. The leader of the Monarch Dragon is referred to with the title of Titania. Normal Monarch Dragons can become larger, more powerful versions of themselves through ingesting a substance that functions similarly to royal jelly. This process causes them to enter a large chrysalis where over the course of a few months they emerge as the new king of their kind. Unlike a queen bee, however, Titania's job is instead to be the guardian of the hive, protecting it from her invaders and repelling potential danger. Most monarch dragons have their own special ability by default. They are also the and but sorry, but these are enhanced greatly upon their metamorphosis. And the list of named individuals that appear in the story are all these, but uh, they the one that we have is Fela here. So yeah, let's take a look at her abilities. Come down. So it's a rather unique looking dragon. It's flying pretty damn slow though. And it can't really dive. So yeah, it's got that going for her. Okay, so first of its abilities is left click, which is a bite attack. As a it follows the hit, so you need to aim the hit properly. Right click is Spore Barrage. It inflicts Cocoon in a direct hit and leaves behind very low damaging and low DPS card that inflicts uh, the Lover Soft Venom. Like so. However, I need you to walk into it, my guy. There you go. Dillo Venom and Cocoon. C key is an aesthetic roar. Okay, that's actually sound unique. X key is Root AoE. Uh, basically, it uh, roots down target and creates a wall of plants in front of you. Like so. Left control is a claw swipe attack that inflicts bleeding as you can tell. Right control summons shimmer wings which are, which are monarch dragons at the same level as her. Like that. Oh my god there's a lot of you. Okay. And now they're gonna swarm it. Yup those are very colourful breaths. I'll let them handle it. Oh my god, they look like they're like just flies, to be honest. Like butterflies. And lastly is this her Q key, which is Wing Beat. Which, you know, it's just similar to a dragon. And yeah, uh, that's actually all for this creature. Honestly, very pretty, uh, especially with all those dragons flying around, with all the patterns and stuff like that. Alright, on to the next creature. Now, for the second last creature of the mod of this particular mod video is this, Vals, the False Titan. He has a rather long bio, so I'm gonna read it out to you guys now. The Odd Child of Gaia, Vals is a centaur-like titan who seems to directly oppose his mother. Due to his strange affinity with the moon and his awkward appearance, he was ruthlessly bullied by his siblings, and his mother who believed it was best for children to sort out their own troubles caused him to eventually leave his family. He would later stumble upon the White Death Kaitan, and despite how drastically different they were from each other, the two became friends. Vals fought alongside Kaitan and became part of the Five Titan Band, 
alongside Kaitan, Iroh, Goliath, and Horus. Despite his mother's love for him turning to vitriol, what the hell? Vitriol hatred long ago, Vals never truly could bring himself to blame his mother. Despite Kaitan's insistence that all his problems led up to her in the end, Vals possessed wisdom beyond her, his age, which made him a well respected titan even amongst the elders like Cthulhu and Kronos. Kaitan would eventually gift Vals one of his spikes as a sign of friendship. And Vals, and sorry, not Vals. And using Vals' brother Colossalus Bone, Vals would have his friend Arachne create a spear for him to use in combat. Vals would also go and befriend Ragnarona, a outcast Titan among, yeah, sorry, an outcast among Titans. Sorry about that. Just as he had been outcast by his family. When a new Titania was selected among the Monarch Dragon, Vals was one of the first Titans to meet personality with her. And impressed by her will and resolve to protect others, claims she may have potentially be the best leader of the Monarch Dragons had in a very long time. Vals was one of the four Titans that led an attack on the, of the plague, alongside former Titania, Arachne, and Ragna Rona. Ragnar Rona. But the four were overwhelmed and Vals stayed behind to hold off the plague for the other three to escape. A grieving Titan entered a furious rage, and despite the agreement between the Titans that the Elder Titan should not fight the plague directly for fear of infection, Titan charged single-handedly into battle and wiped out the entire plague Titan army. In the process, in learning he was one of the few Titans immune to the infection. The guilt that he could have ended the war from the start pre and prevented Vals and many other titans from dying would weigh Kaitan down for the rest of his life. Okay, rather somber story, but you're alive now, so let's take a look at your abilities. Well, first of all, let's take a look at how it looks like. It looks like this. Kind of weird. And let's take a look at his abilities. We run. We have a skeleton of a monkey, I guess. So, left click is a arm swipe attack, which does that. Right click is a roar that does damage around it and grants blood curse, meaning you can heal from it. I'm not sure whether there's lightning striking around. Oh yeah, there are lightning. Bow green lightning. C key is swipe, which deals damage twice. X key is a smash attack, which deals the most damage apparently, Jesus Christ, look at that. Uh, but from the looks of it, the smash attack also puts in its uh, target's drag weight, so the smaller the creature, the more damage you do. Like so, like you see that Dillo just took 8000 damage, however this guy took only 300 damage. Left control is a spinning attack, not sure what it does, oh, you just... Legit a spinning attack, I guess. Right control throws a fire rock. So like so. Well, it throws a fire rock, inflicts holy flames. The rock explodes in fire, but it also summons lightning around the place. So that's pretty interesting actually. Now, um, Q key is water breath, which looks more like vomit to be honest, but. You'll get the creatures will get a scalded effect. Again, it's not scalded for some reason. It this particular creature can also power up. So basically, Z key will make him powered up, making all his attacks a lot stronger. Not really a lot stronger, but just giving them a boost, like so. Even this also have a boost. And yeah, that's it for this weird. Creature actually. He has an alternate R which is not stated what he does, but I can't really use it anyway. And let me read out to you his boss notes. It has damage reduction, is immune to its uh, unique fire debuff variant and its damage. Its weakness is explosions. It can jump and is pretty fast. And yeah, that's it for Boss the Boss Titan, or rather this guy, the Boss Titan. And now, last of all, is this titan. Looks very familiar, but it has a tree grew out its back. So it's different, but it's the same. It's the same. It's just it's just the forest titan. But this is Gaia, sister of Yggdrasil, mother of titans. 
She has a particularly long bio, so I'm going to read them paragraph by paragraph. One of the two colossal cephalo cephalopod-like titans, Gaia and Yggdrasil were born as equals, meant to achieve full strength while working together. But the moment they hatched, Gaia drained her brother's vitality, leaving him permanently crippled and weakened. With their ability to edit their own DNA, Gaia and Yggdrasil would over time morph their bodies to better suit terrestrial locomotion once the titans began to began moving onto land. From the moment of her birth, Gaia was despised by her older brother Kaitan, who was revolted by her physical appearance. Throughout their childhood, Gaia tried to win the approval of her brother to no success. His rejecting her as part of the family would let her to would let to her eventually growing this to despise him as well when they were teens. Gaia had a weird passion for genetically modifying other organisms against their will and attempting to create life herself, many of whom were killed by Kaitan in utter disgust. In addition, Kaitan and Kaijin would occasionally play pranks on her on their sister. Gaia and Kaitan's rivalry would continue into their early adulthood before it inevitably escalated into its own full-scale war. But before this conflict, the larger-scale war would occur between the god serpent and his creation, alongside nearly other titans on the planet at the time. Gaia, Kaitan, Kaijin, Yggdrasil, Okeanos, and Behemoth battled the enormous kaiju, in which Yggdrasil temporarily fused with Gaia, and then their combined strength was allowed, or rather their combined strength was enough to match the serpent in strength, restraining the enormous god and to allow the other titans to have a fighting chance. After the battle, Gaia and Yggdrasil entered hibernation to restore energy, in which Yggdrasil would be killed and devoured by a parasitic titan that would eventually grow into the titan designated by the humans as Typhoon. After this event, in Gaia's crushingly realization of her own mortality, something she became obsessed with overcoming for a large portion of the rest of her life, Gaia's fear of dying is rivaled only by Kaitan's. The lengths or she would go to prevent her own death will result in her more monstrous appearance. Her cells regenerate and repair and almost entirely stop her aging. She eventually develop, developed a fear of receiving irreparable damage to the brain and will result in her eventually transferring the function of her brain over her entire body, rendering her entire body able to function as her brain, what? And rendering her actual, what the fuck am I reading here? Gaia's other organs would slowly lo uh, lose their use and she began her mission to become immortal. Her stomach became an organ that instead produces extremely corrosive acid due to, due to her not needing to consume food for her sustenance. Instead, she can directly drain nutrients from other organisms using her thorns or directly use photosynthesis like plants. Over time, Gaia will eventually go to a step further in self-perfection, merging deceased titans, organic matters like forests and trees, inorganic matters like stone and earth to her body, encasing, sorry, usually encasing hard rock and other material within her body to make it more durable. Due to her fusing the deceased organic matter to her very being, it means she can regenerate damage dealt to those parts of her body as well. Gaia will go through trial and error, tearing apart her body and rebuilding it in order to get the most effective body as possible. Her final form is an 800 meter tall titan who is so large that it crawls on all fours due to its enormous weight. This form of Gaia has an entire forest growing on her back and a mountain fused to her back. Gaia's claw are so powerful she can tear through a mountain with a single blow and nearly slice Kaitan in half as well. Her entire body is wrapped with tendrils which she can control at will to wrap around and stab her opponent. Gaia possess nearly 40 prehensile tail tendrils and these can stretch and deliver devastating blows to her opponent. In the largest titan war since the god serpent, Kaitan would eventually face Gaia alongside the Manticores and, species, and the species Kakinos belong to, alongside dozens of other titans. After a long drawn out war, Gaia was finally defeated and seemingly killed after being disintegrated. However, victory came at a great cost, the extinction of the Manticores and Radiovorians, no idea what that is, 
Taita himself suffered a previous wound in the battle, which would cause permanent damage to her internals. However, in reality, Gaia survived this battle by fusing with the planet itself. It seems that this titan was truly unkillable to the end. This is a long ass story. So yeah, long ass story aside, let's go through all her abilities. Pretty sure it's all very similar to the forest titan, let's be very honest here. Let me spawn... Oops, that's not what I meant to do. But let me spawn an ice titan. As you can tell, this guy towers over the ice titan dramatically. I'm pretty sure it's bigger than the normal forest titan actually. So let's take a look at his abilities. Left click is a arm swipe attack. It's... It deals crippled and it deals massive damage. However, it's pretty slow. Right click is a stomp attack. Which just deals, you know, what stomp does. C key is a arm smash attack. Which basically is just an arm smash attack. Nothing new. X key is SWAT, so it basically just slaps flyers around if there is any flyers. Alternate left control is jumping slam, I'm surprised this tree can jump. Alternate left control. Okay, just a my very minor jump. Uh, it doesn't seem like it do. Seems, seems like the range is a bit small. Let me get this guy's attention. Okay, so his jump attack is very, very, um... Well, the range is very limited. I guess you must be directly under it in order for it to work. Q-Key is a double arm smash. Which does this. It also roots creatures in place. Which is just, you know, terrifying if you think about it. Imagine this coming towards you. Shift left control is life drain. Which drains the health of creatures nearby. Not sure how badly it drains it though. I mean it's a cool effect, but it's not really doing much. O is to summon a bunch of minions. I think it's Quetzals, or is it just birds? Okay, so it summons birds. Which are level 1 and just die. Alright, fantastic. So these minions are not the most useful. Yeah, look at that. They're, they're, they're just normal Quetzals. Alright. Now to the aesthetic moves. Uh, shift right control is a aesthetic raw. Which spit stuff. That's not an aesthetic raw if it's spit stuff, right? Alternate right control is shake. Okay, just shaking around. I don't really. Okay, meh. And with that, I'm gonna go through the boss notes. It is heavily armored and high health, takes nearly 50% reduced damage from enemies. When while her Quetzal will. Her Quetzals will alpha buff her and Pterodon minions. Like normal alphas, this will stack. It cannot sprint, it is weak to fire, around 4 to 5 times if I'm correct, if I'm correct. Increased damage taken from Typhoon's attack, so Typhoon, the boss, will deal additional damage to her. Similar to Okeanos, it takes increased damage from the Big Tree and Gojiran. It's a boss and has no unique taming method, just knock her out. Like, just knock her out with a lot of topper. And yeah, that's it for this particular mod review. And uh, next week I will be going through the last of this particular mods mod review. Honestly, thus far it's pretty okay. The mods, the mods, pretty okay. Using all the assets that you can get in up to make unique creatures. However, obviously it's not hundred percent unique since you're just taking models here and there. But it doesn't matter. With that, I will come to the end of this particular mod showcase. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope to see all of you in the next video or stream. Bye! Come smash the ground. Yeah, the smash the ground attack is the coolest.
That's cool. Alright, bye.